these mountains, lakes, and forests have inspired fantastical tales for generations. But long before that, they were the backbone of the country's rich mythology and folklore. It's likely the mountain you're hiking to was once a troll, caught out in the dawn light. Diving into a sparkling lake to cool down, you might be sharing it with a sea serpent of epic proportions, or a water horse with malevolent intentions, or perhaps you will be granted the gift of music by plunging waterfall, but only if your offering is good enough. Scandinavian folklore consists of many creatures, good or evil, which have frightened people for centuries. They were often meant to scare children, but they are essential and important to modern northern society even today. In the 1890s, something changed in the way common Scandinavians saw themselves and their culture. They looked back in time to rediscover their old myths and legends, folklore which had been forgotten because of the coming of Christianity. It was a time when people feared nature because we were becoming more industrialized. The forest, mountains, and sea all seem strange, dark, magic, and because of that, we are now left with evil spirits and monsters who represent our own way. Of seeing nature. Supernatural beings are part of the world. They are old and as ancient as nature itself. However, according to many folk legends, the supernatural nature spirits were the fallen angels, expelled from heaven together with Lucifer, condemned to remain on earth and ruling over the place they once fell. On the other hand, no single explanation is enough to explain or classify supernatural nature spirits. The forest spirits represent wild nature as a counter image to cultural order. She roams the vast and deep forest of Scandinavia and Finland and was known as Holdra. There are many different beliefs and narratives about the forest spirit. Legends reinforce the danger of getting lost in a forest, especially in dense forests like those found in Sweden and Finland. What are the Holdra? The Holdra are beautiful and seductive forest beings in Germanic and Scandinavian folklore. Their name generally translates as covered or secret. Likely because the Holdra usually tried to hide their mystical nature from people. Other names for the Holdra include Skuzra or Forest Spirit, Talamaya or Pine Tree Mary in Sweden, or Olda in Sami. Folklore in Norwegian tells there are also male Holdras called Holdrakol. However, the Holderko are very different from the female forest dwellers, so much that they can be viewed as an entirely different species. While the Holdra are gorgeous seductresses, the Holderko are hideously ugly underground creatures. Most Norse folklore describe the Holdra as a type of Ra, nature's keepers or wardens in Norse mythology. This makes them related to the aquatic Shoda or Havsfru spirits who are viewed as the Norse origin of the mermaid myth. Once Christianity was adopted across Germany and Scandinavia, a new origin myth was created for the Holdra. Inspired by the Scandinavian folklore that tells a tale about a woman 
who only baptized half her children. God once visited the woman's cottage. She was ashamed of her actions and hid her unbaptized children. God then decreed that those she had hidden from him would be hidden from humanity, and they became the Holdra. All myths across Scandinavia and Germany agree that the Holdra are stunningly fair blonde women who wander the forest around humankind. Tall, slender, with a hollow back, long golden hair, and a crown made of beautiful flowers. The Holdra often appeared in front of lonely young men, or even young boys, and tried to seduce them. A common belief found in different types of narratives is that the forest spirit was able to lead people astray and this is something that could happen to everyone who had business in the woods, even experienced hunters. She could change the environment, hide trails, create deceptions. When she had led some astray, the person was lost in this way could hear a shrill laughter, a sure sign that it was her doing. The forest spirit was the ruler of the forest realm. She was its sovereign ruler of all that was in the forest, including all the animals. This makes her the dominant force in the forest and earns her the respect of hunters. For if she was angered, or if for some reason she was annoyed at the hunter, she could make sure that the game of the forest became invulnerable from gunshots and traps or she could hide all the animals from the hunter in question. The one distinctive feature that tells Holdra apart from beautiful human women, however, is the cow's tail that often sticks out from their dresses or robes. The Holdra try to hide their tails when they are performing their seductions, but in most myths, the young men are given the chance to notice and react to the Holdra's tail. In some Swedish myths, the Holdra have fox-like tails instead, making them look a bit similar to the Japanese Shinto Kintsune spirits. There's no other connection, however and the fox-tailed holder act very much like the cow-tailed ones. The Holdra are always portrayed as seductresses in all Germanic and Scandinavian myths, but their exact goals and behavior can be vary greatly depending on the myth. The Holdra, if betrayed, are known to punish their victims severely. They help and punish. They set limits. They make trouble for people or generously endow valuable gifts. The way a holder reacts to you is based on how you treat her. Treat her with respect and she may reward you. Treat her cruelly and receive the same. The moral of the story is to treat others how you want to be treated. The most common erotic encounters take place in the charcoal stacks or by the campfire in the woods. According to many folk legends, a man gets a reward for having intercourse with her, and a common legend type relates how a man spends the night in a forest cabin. During the night, 
she visits him and they have intercourse. She thanks him by letting him shoot an elk or a bear during the next morning, usually by showing him where the animal sleeps or rests. The same type of legend also has a negative outcome if the man refuses to have intercourse with her. She makes sure he will get bad hunting luck. Other legends speak of a man who finds a house or a bed in the forest and that he meets and has intercourse with the forest spirit there. When he wakes up, he finds himself hugging a tree or even finds himself in a marsh, usually the result of him saying his prayers before lying down in the bed. According to another legend type, the forest spirit was able to take the shape of the man's wife and come to him with food in his charcoal kiln. After having intercourse with her, he later meets his real wife, and then he realizes that the first woman was the forest spirit. It might not come as a surprise that most scholars have interpreted these legends as erotic fantasies emanating from lonely men thinking about women and sexual activities when alone in the woods. Many of the stories concerning an encounter with the forest spirit is of an intimate nature, referring to men having sexual relationship with her. She is a physical being, made up of flesh and blood, and can at least in some folk legends even become pregnant and deliver the child to the unsuspecting father. In Sweden and Norway and Swedish Finland, the forest spirit is female, frequently described as looking like a beautiful woman from the front, but with a backside like a rotten tree trunk. Another distinctive feature that she might have in various tales is a cow tail, and sometimes hooves and or furry legs. The descriptions are indicative of her as someone who partly belonged to the wild nature and its beast. The best way to describe her would be as a humanoid image of the power of the forest realm. Male forest spirits are rare in, in Swedish folklore, but not unheard of. Sometimes they act as the female forest spirit's husband. In some legends, the holder would simply appear in front of the unsuspected man or boy without trying to actively seduce them. If the human proved to be courteous, even after noticing the holder's tell, she would often award him with good fortune or useful advice. Some of the legends go, a boy in Tibetan went fishing, but he had no luck. Then he met a beautiful lady and she was so dazzling that he felt he had to catch his breath. And then he realized who she was. He could see a fox's tail sticking out below the skirt. As he knew, it was forbidden to comment on the tail of the Lady of the Forest. If it wasn't done in the most polite manner, he bowed deeply and said in a soft voice, Milady, I see that your petticoat shows below your skirt. The lady thanked him gracefully and hid her tail under her skirt, telling the boy to fish on the other side of the lake. That day, the boy had the greatest luck with his fishing. He caught a fish every time he threw out the line. This was the Holdra's recognition of his politeness. In another story from Sedal, when she avenged her pride on a young bragger she had sworn to marry, on the promise that he would not tell anyone of their secret relationship, the boy instead bragged about his bride for an entire year, and when they met again, she beat him around the ears with her cow's tail. He lost his hearing and his wits for the rest of his life.
The troll wife tells the story of how a human man desired a beautiful Huldra. She is described as a human-looking troll with a cow's tail, but she loses her beauty the instant she is captured by this foolhardy man, and he is forced to marry her despite her ugliness. During their wedding ceremony, her tail drops off. At first, her husband treats her badly, bitter over her bad looks. The holder remains well-mannered and even compassionate toward her husband, until one day she shows off her full troll strength by bending metal horseshoes with her hands. Surprise, surprise! Her husband is suddenly much kinder to her from that moment on. The Player on the Jew's Harp is a similar story about a man wedding a Huldra maiden, but in this case there was no mention of a cowtail, and she remains beautiful throughout. She is described as being one of the underground folk, known variously as the Huldra folk or the hidden people. In the story, it seems these people cannot be easily seen by the human eyes and they can bewitch other creatures to be hidden as well. The man attracts the Huldra's attention with his skillful playing of the Jew's harp. Huldra seems partial to beautiful music, and unwittingly captures her by flinging the harp at her head, accidentally drawing blood. Now in this story, it's a big thing is made of the fact that the Huldra is not a Christian. In fact, once they are married, the husband begins to bully her because of this. She ends up displaying her strength in the same way as the troll wife, Huldra, by bending red hot horseshoes with her hands. For a while after that, the husband is good to her, and they prosper. And then his mind darkens, and he goes back to his old ways. One day, he beats her draws blood once more, and she vanishes forever. She doesn't die. She simply becomes hidden again and spends the rest of her life protecting her husband from her own friends and family, who understandably want to make him pay for his wrongdoings. It's a very sad tale made bittersweet by the enduring love of the Huldra for her husband. He dies an empty man, full of regret. For what he has done. In many other tales, however, the Holdress symbolize both the dangers of the wild forest and mountains, as well as the treachery people ascribe to single women at that time. In that regard, the ancient Huldra tales are likely the earliest predecessor to stories about witches in Europe. According to a most beliefs in Norwegian tales, the forest spirit approached men who were alone or close to the forest. In the folklore material, two groups stand out most regularly for encounters with the forest spirit. The charcoal burners on one hand and the hunters on the other. That is, men who are alone in the forest for long periods of time. Not all stories speak of the encounters as negative. When the man was willing and actually became the forest spirit's lover, she could help him and grant rewards, from blowing in his rifle barrel so that he never missed, to helping him in times of crisis. For example, waking him up and if the charcoal stack was about to burn down. Not all Huldra stories unfold so fortunately, however. In many Huldra myths, the wild women seduce unmarried men and lead them into the mountains 
They sometimes played on harps or sang to lure the easily tempted men. Once in the mountains or deep forest, lots of physical pleasures typically followed, and the holdra would ask the man to marry her. And if he wouldn't, she wouldn't let him go until he agreed. Like most mystical creatures, the Holdra can be both good and evil, but they tend to skew more toward the latter, similar to elves in many regards. The Holdra are often just mischievous but outright malevolent. The only way to protect yourself from falling into the grasp of a Holdra is to either ignore her or to be polite toward her. The right approach would typically depend on the type of story being told. It seems fair to assume that most Holdra myths likely came from reclusive women who lived alone in the forest. From there, these myths eventually evolved into legends about witches. The Holdra are often associated with other female shamans, megs, and shamans in North mythology, such as the Volva and the Sikawana. These are typically female shamans who practice your magic, the mystical art of telling and shaping the future. And I apologize if I didn't say those words correctly. I'm really trying to respect In some myths, they are viewed almost as partially by my goddesses of nature. They visit wandering strangers and test them to see if they are virtuous. And if the test is passed, the holder would bestow good fortune upon them. The holder themselves aren't overly represented in modern culture, but there are many later variations such as witches and elves are exceedingly popular in fantasy literature, movies, games, and other social media. Still, mentions and interpretations of the Holger myth can be seen here and there in modern cultures, as the 2016 horror film Holger, Lady of the Forest, the Norwegian fantasy thriller as well as several folk and metal bands named Holdra in both Norway and the U.S. In conclusion, the Holdra are unique and enigmatic creatures from Norse mythology. She is a seductress that roams in the jungles and lures any lonely man in her vicinity. They are protectors of nature and mountain cattle, mainly seen when they're emerging from natural bodies of water. The holder represent both good and evil of women. They usually represent both the dangers of nature as well as striking out against those that attack single women. They have been depicted as witches and elves, among other forms in modern culture. Their folkloric status has left a mark on modern culture, and some of the very strange tales about this creature have become part of cultural identity. In other words, they have had an influence on modern culture and movies have been heavily inspired by them. These mysterious, sometimes dangerous creatures from Norse mythology and folktales have inspired many writers, composers, and even painters. A little known fact about them is that they're evolving as well, going from myth to reality in some places. They have influenced modern culture and remain a little known but influential part of it. The forest spirits represent wild nature as a counter image to cultural order. 
She roams the vast and deep forest of Scandinavia and Finland. She wrecks marriages by enticing married men into leaving their wives. So a good character of the forest spirit teaches a life lesson. And by also reminding you, you will likely encounter many tests in life. Therefore, you need to be strong enough to handle them courageously. When you allow challenges to overcome you, it will be the end of your goals and dreams. The Huldra symbolism reminds you that life is not a bed of roses. Things will not be as smooth as you always want. You will encounter hardships and trials and temptations along the way, but you must hold on to no matter what. Do not resort to shortcuts to achieve your goals. Instead, you should always put on integrity, which attracts good luck and fortune. And last but not least, if you find yourself face to face with a beautiful maiden of the forest, be polite and treat her with respect. Otherwise, you might never leave the forest again. A very special thank you to all who watch this. And please comment, like, and share, guys. Share, share, share if you like, if you like it. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you liked this edition of The Holdra. And I will see you guys again soon for the next. I'm going to shuffle the deck. We'll find something else. Thank you guys. Remember to comment, share.